Hey y'all, so happy Saturday. We're back with our book project. I'm excited to keep it moving along. I was good, it was good to hear that so many of you really like this project. You're having a lot of fun with it. You like the concertina style, working with, um, you know, your images and what have you. Um, and thank you so much. So many of you went over and got the printables. You really like the photography and what have you on them. So I really, really appreciate that. So let's keep on going with this. I figure there's going to be one more session after this one because we're going to then put the covers once everything is finished. Because what I'm going to do today is going to be some jelly printing. We're going to do some collaging. And all of that's going to need to dry before we actually put the covers on. So I think my covers are going to be this, this sort of um, corduroy um, upholstery fabric. I really like the color of it and so I'm going to print these um, and then they'll actually be my front and back covers but I'm also once they're dry I think I'm going to also back them with a, a, a stronger paper or cardstock and then that'll be glued onto this final page here so we'll do all that next week plus we'll work on what our closure is going to be but in the meantime these will get printed and put aside to dry and then we'll do the collaging and what have you on these in a lot of these spaces that are left over and we're going to do some jelly printing so yeah we got a lot in front of us let's just get going how you guys doing it's good um you know being back with you also just so you know that after this video goes live a little housekeeping I'm going to have, um, so this normally goes live at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So at 10 o'clock um, Mountain Standard or 9 o'clock Pacific Standard, sorry for all that, but I'm East Coast, so I, I mean, I'm West Coast, so I do everything on uh, Pacific Standard Time. There'll be a live interview with me and Tracy um, with Lebazon Brushes. Um, so many of you know that I use those brushes. Um, I have the intuitive scripting workshop that's coming up. That's another story. It is definitely sold out by the time I, I always share everything first with my patrons. And um, so, yeah, and they grabbed half the spots. And then I, the next, the next tier of letting my community know is I send everything out on my mailing list. Well, like within 24 hours, the 100 seats in the Zoom session were sold out. So what I did is I kept two seats back, one for my Instagram community and one for my, uh, one for my um, YouTube. So what I'm going to do on, on the live session, which comes two hours after this one is uploaded on Saturday, which is today, you know, because this is when it's being uploaded. In the live session with Tracy... I'm going to let you guys know I'm going to do a give giveaway of one of the <coughs> excuse me one of the spots that's in <clears throat> excuse me I got to get some water one of the spots that's in the workshop so somebody is going to win excuse me a free spot in the workshop at the end of the month and I figure that way I could prayerfully make up to you guys a little bit because I never got a chance to introduce it on YouTube, Instagram, my blog, Pinterest, nowhere. It just never got that far. So clearly I'm going to need to do another um, workshop. So I figured you guys could get a chance to win um, a slot. So that's going to be, so when that interview goes live, uh, anyone who's interested in taking the, the scripting and entering into the giveaway, You'll just comment below that video and then I'll have my assistant. She'll just go through and do, she has a lot of fun things that she likes to do. She may even do a raffle draw. We'll see, but, um, and we'll select someone, um, probably the following Friday, um, probably the following Saturday's, um, workshop. I'm sorry, video. <laughs> I got workshop on the mind, um, who the winner was. So someone will definitely win here on YouTube and I've got one spot also that I'm going to raffle off over on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, go over, be looking out for that because that's going to go up 
um, around the same time this is. Um, and if you don't follow me and you want to have a, a second opportunity, go follow me over on Instagram. It's at rare birds. The link is always in my description, but I'll make sure it's below this video. And that was my way of saying, Hey guys, I'm going to give two spots away. Um, just to, you know, spread the loving and, uh, we'll have another workshop coming up though. Okay. So I wanted to get that out the way. So you guys will know to look for that video or that live session. And I'll be on there. So you can be able to ask a lot of questions about brushes, about scripting. Tracy is an absolute ex expert on these brushes. You guys know how much I love my brush. These, I mean, <clears throat> they have everything to do with how successful you actually will be with your scripting as well. So yeah, we'll have a good time over there. So make sure you show up, um, you know, if you want to hang out with me. <clears throat> so let's get <clears throat> going with what we're doing here. So I'm gonna put the jelly plate to the side except for what I am going to do let's put this over here right now we are going to start with before I actually collage that I definitely want to let me get this I want to be able to show you how I'm going to um, do the covers. So that's going to be, this is my stencils. They're, um, they're in production. These are my samples. We should have them to release very soon, very shortly. So they will be coming. Um, and I'll keep everyone posted on when they'll be actually released, but they're coming. So I'm going to use gesso. It's good old white gesso. If you want, I like the way the gesso texture works on the fabric. I just love it. But if you want to not have white, you know, you can always get the gesso and put some color in it um, before you use it. So you can always put some color, paint or whatever in it. But I'm going to use the white. Okay, it looks like I'm going to close this window too because it's the time of day. When the planes, I live near Air Force Base. You guys have heard me say that before. And they start those maneuvers and they're relentless. Okay. <laughs> so I like to, so I've put them, I've put some of it out on the, my palette. And um, let me get, a, you know, a key card or credit card, whatever you want to use. And let's go ahead and let's put this in. It's okay. So I just pick some up and you just want to just pressing it down in these grooves. Oops, it slid a little bit. That's okay. So I'll just kind of twist it like that. I love this technique. I kind of discovered it on another book that I'm working on and I was like, yes, we like this. Probably should have taped it down because it's sliding around a little bit. But that's okay because I like the um, the look of that. So let's go ahead and put one run row here. So yeah, love it. And when it dries, it just dries really. It has a nice raised texture to it. Yum. So we'll put that to the side. Just put this down like this. Put this to the side and let it dry. Love it. So we'll do this the back side. I'm going to do it the same way. I think I may use the, um, let me just kind of wipe some of this gesso off because I will be using this again. Just kind of wipe it off so it's not so thick. Okay. 
And so, I'm going to use my thinner stencil and just do this one a little differently, just so the covers, you know, aren't exactly the same front and back, but similar concept. You know what I'm going to try doing too? Let me just go ahead and tape it in place. <laughs> So I'll, I'll put a little tape here and then let's tape it off on this side and that'll keep it from moving. That's uh, old printmaking technique when you do, um, you call it uh, things like silk screening. That's, what I, that's the word I'm looking for. Okay. Wow. Yep. We love it. So maybe what I'll do is do it like that. Just have it go in a different direction. Wait a minute, you know. Yeah, I'll do it like that. really does do um, pretty good just and with the fabric because the fabric is so cushiony you can just kind of press into the stencil and right down into the the grooves in it, it works well. Okay. Yep. Love it. Okay. So, I think what I'm going to do is I where I'm going to put this stencil. Just put it down. I've just been putting it on my surface there. to. So, I do have one more. This is kind of like an overlay. So I think what I'm going to do is put this one because I have the sing. I, I'm also <clears throat> releasing single. Um, let's do it like this. Scripted elements like this shape in the um, collection. Alrighty. Okay. Just to kind of put a different element there. And then I can decide which of these is going to be my front and which is going to be my back. Oh, love it. Love it. Okay. That's good stuff. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is just put these to the side and let them dry. <clears throat> and then this will be a part of the cover. Um, yeah. So good stuff. So we'll let that dry. Okay. So in the meantime, we just wipe this plate off. Well, let's put more stuff on it, Robin. Let me just get my my baby wipe. Because <clears throat> I find that the gesso will kind of get in and interfere with the mark making or the print making later on. It doesn't like to just come off the plate with the rest of the colors. So I just go ahead and wipe it off okay so now what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead to collaging and then we'll come back to using our jelly plate again all right so move this all out the way 
clean this up. Okay. Figure out where I'm going to put this. Because <laughs> I still have that paint on there in case I want to use it. All right. Now, a little dirty desk, but I've been doing a lot of printing and stuff. So, okay. So now, <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead. I, I pulled out these vintage papers because I want to add that scripting into this um, journal. And one of my, I tell you, I've just got the best patrons really really honestly I do I'm not just saying that I really do have some of the best patrons man they take good care of me um and one of my patrons just sent me a whole like literally a UPS box full of vintage um these vintage books and papers that she got in in Asia years ago like they're like a lot of them are just so old and I'm like I just almost I mean, I passed out. I did. I passed out in the floor when I opened the box up. I had to be resuscitated. I'm like, who sends that kind of stuff to someone? Oh, my goodness. Just the best. And she said she's got a ton more of it. She said, I'm putting together another box. I can't imagine. It was all kind of goodies in that. All kinds of stuff from actually burrow. She sent me a piece of burrow, like old, very old vintage burrow cloth. It's the mosquito netting that's used um and when and when it's uh been um repaired with the burrow style and it's b-o-r-o -O for those who are not familiar with it so i'm going to go ahead and kind of open some of these up and crunch them because i like i don't know i like to have them already sort of crinkled they flatten back out but i like the idea of them being crinkled so we'll do a couple of those and um, and we're going to do I have this page here as well so this is a two they're, they're two ply the way they do the pages so they always have a second layer it's almost like a napkin and this is beautiful oh my goodness I'll be jelly printing on this oh, this is such beautiful gompy paper it's so old oh but look at the fibers in it see those fibers oh, just gorgeous paper mm. so this right here is going to get used in the book so I'm going to go ahead and crinkle these. <laughs> okay. So now we got all our paper nice and crinkled. Let me get my glue book. And let's start. Let's go ahead and start gluing everything on. So basically, I'm going to kind of go through and sort of figure out where I want stuff. And just kind of rip and tear and let me see I want to put one of these Let's see where I want to put stuff so I like the gold and stuff there like I'm not going to get rid of all of it but I am going to have to reinforce some of these edges I decided first I was just going to jelly print right on them but it's not this paper in certain places isn't strong enough so I'm going to not do that and this paper, though it's thin, this Japanese paper, and this is really old paper, so it's been done so good. Um, it's just a really strong, beautiful paper. So I'm going to kind of put it down so it kind of goes into the gold, but not all the way. So we're just going to start collaging. I'll just kind of chit-chat as I go. Let me get, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna use the, the glue stick because I don't want a lot of moisture in it. So this is the Giotto glue stick. And remember, this is gonna go translucent. So we're still gonna see the staining underneath it. So all that staining that I like won't get all covered up. It's just going to, you know, you'll be able to see it a bit underneath there. 
this paper is just oh boy that going down is just some kind of yummy and just see the feathering there it's nothing like working with Asian papers the, the really good ones it's nothing like it so I'm gonna take this piece off all this stuff I keep this is great stuff for my DIY stamps oh. so I want to I'll come put stuff down in that little area let me just see I'm just gonna tear strips of it I'm just glue we're just gonna go for it where's my glue stick right here I love collaging it's one of my favorite things to do especially with old ephemera just beautiful papers are you kidding it's nothing like it just doesn't get better but I got to keep up with all of my little tools okay here we go <laughs> oh look at that see how you can see we can still see through it I'll put it up closer in just a second but I'm gonna fill that all up so yeah and I'm gonna actually maybe I'll get myself together to do a set of these as my printables for next month is what I was thinking but I've got to just do a lot of um, I've got to do a lot of you know scanning and kind of making it ready but I'm gonna try to get my act together because I think you guys will love these papers and it's a wonderful way of sharing with you some of the stuff that was shared with me so <clears throat> I am going to try to make Asian papers next month's printables I just got a lot of work because with that and then my the scripting course and workshop that I'm I basically have all ready to go but I'm still working out all the details for that because I just want it to be epic that's the word I'm using I want it to be epic so it's a lot going into it a lot we're going to be doing but should be able to that's going to be good right there I think I'm going to keep that whole piece I'm not even going to get rid of that end this just really drives home just the uniqueness of this little folio so yeah I'll share some of these with you but any kind of old you know just go through some of your old books or just truthfully I'm gonna tell you the way I look at it when it comes to my art if you really want some beautiful authentic authentic things in your art you may go out and go to like a, 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 a vintage bookstore or an antique bookstore and you may find a book that you really really love and that book could be it could be expensive it could be like fifty sixty dollar book let's say right but look out but this is how I look at it look at all the pages that are in that book so you can actually use the real pages right because that's where the old paper is that's where all the yummies are a lot of times when I'm doing my paper packs I put vintage papers and stuff in them because to me yeah I may have paid sixty dollars for the book and maybe you look like it's a rare rare book it's being torn up but actually let me see what else what are the patterns I yeah that may be happening but you're putting it back in art that you're gonna sell or frame yourself or give away you know as a, as a wonderful special gift and then look at the cost per use you got a, a book has 200 something pages in it you're not gonna use all those pages in a collage so if you look at it like that why not go and work with some really beautiful you know unique papers to really make your work special so honestly that's how I look at it just some food for thought <laughs> it's the same reason why you you know people say oh designer stuff costs so much yeah it does and I mean I'm not into designer stuff for the name and all that because I, I grew up my mother always just bought the best stuff for us because then she didn't have to buy it again she said you know I'm gonna go buy you good like at Easter you buy good good Easter shoes that way they're gonna last you the rest of the year <laughs> So, you get more use out of it so I just grew up with this mentality you just buy good stuff at last so yeah I may you know you could spend you could say oh wow that's a lot to spend on a belt you know oh that's $150 that's a lot to spend on a belt or $250 that's too much for a belt but 
I mean, I have belts that I've paid for that I've had for 10 or 15 years. I use them all the time and they hold up. <laughs> They're not falling apart with this here. So then if you look at it from that standpoint, cost per use, I mean, that belt now has only cost me probably five cents for every time I put it on. Where, you know, you buy another belt that's, let's say, 35 or $40, and you wear it a half a dozen times, and it's coming apart, it's a mess. Now you now it was end up being $5 per use or something. So, you know, I look at my art supplies the same way, honestly. <clears throat> the things I know I'm going to use or get a lot of value out of them or I'm using it in my artwork that I'm selling well yeah go ahead and spend look how this is look I'll put it up close so you guys can see then yeah go ahead and treat yourself and spend the money on it look how good that looks see in that section there just put it up close so you guys can see it ah uh, yeah I'm looky there so you can see the under layer that's just that's just offsetting look at this that's just offsetting this thing so beautifully. You guys know how excited I get when it comes to doing my art. Okay. So, we're just going to keep on putting things down. Sections. I'm loving this paper. Yeah, I'll put some of... I'll, I'll make some of these. I'll do a pack. Um... Of just the straight images so that you guys can reproduce them and I'll tell you reproduce them on the calligraphy paper you know you saw me use that calligraphy paper when we made the hinges here and always look in my um, I always put the links underneath the video in that description section so when I talk about this is what we're gonna be doing today just scroll down a little further because I know sometimes I get asked you know where some of the things I've used where it can be gotten just know to look down in the description and, and go all the way down scroll all the way down because a lot of the stuff I use all the time I keep the links in the description permanently but yeah so what you want to do is let's put this whole piece here I love it so um you could actually take the printables and reproduce them on that same calligraphy that same calligraphy paper and you get like a hundred sheets of it for six dollars or something like that on Amazon. It's very, very affordable. But it's the thin paper, <clears throat> and so when you go to print on it, you'll be able to um kind of replicate this sort of very thin look of stuff that'll go transparent and the thing i like about them is it, it goes through your printer really well you don't have to worry about backing that calligraphy paper you don't have to worry about all of that or it jamming just put one sheet in it at a time don't try to load your printer but it won't um it won't jam or anything so definitely get the calligraphy paper um, for all the all the printables or anything you print out your jelly prints and everything look good on it but also um, for next month's printables, that stuff is going to be really good. So go ahead and order it now so you're ready when the printables <laughs> go out. Okay, so let's keep on going here. So I'm going to put that piece down there. So let's go ahead. Because that's a big section to cover. And also, it, you know, it's the paper is not that strong there. Because it's only one piece of paper like I showed you guys. So this is a good place. And this paper, though it's thin, is uber, uber strong. These, this, this Asian paper, um, Gompi or Mitsumatsu, they're all, it's commonly called rice papers. You'll hear that term used. But actually, the, there's different fibers that um, go in. Um, they're off of various, like, plants and bushes. So you don't have to kill the tree or the bush to create this paper. It's all done from harvesting the, the branches. And so the plant continues to produce because they just harvest the branches. And then the branches are um, go through a process of being um, stripped and cooked. And it's a whole process to making it. But I tell you, it makes them the best paper so now we have that here 
So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab, maybe I'll grab a long piece like this. So it'll just go all the way across. Yep. Alrighty. And this one has all of the worm holes in it that were eating the paper. Yeah, you know, these this this is very old stuff. And I like I love all of that. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. Oh my goodness, look at this. this stuff is so beautiful. Just seeing it on each page and signature like this. <clears throat> Okay, so we're gonna flip it over and get the other side going. Okay, so I have these sections to fill in. So I think what I'm gonna do is let's put this here. Put all my little pieces together. Let's do the same thing. We'll put this across here. This paper is tearing pretty easily, but you can also use your water brush. You've seen me use that <clears throat> to put across it to soften um, the paper. And then you get a really nice tear that way too. This has been tearing pretty good so I'm going to stick with that. So this is going to go down there. I'm going to line this line up there because I'm going to bring some of this other right here. Yeah. So this will come down the side over here. So. Alrighty. So yeah, if you um, <clears throat> want to kind of stay up with, I'm, with what I'm doing, I, I do have a newsletter that I put out infrequently, but I'm going to actually get it out a little bit more, maybe every two months or something like that. And I try to let you guys know what I'm doing and what's upcoming so you can be ready for it. And also, but every time I release anything, be it my, my books that I sell or my... Um, workshops um, you know, anything like that that I'm offering my my paper packs or my fabric bundles all that stuff I always honestly um, it's one of my patron benefits so I always give my patrons 24 hours to respond before I put it out so they always get it a day before me releasing it but then after that, the very next place I release it. So I'm not saying you got to be a patron. So, you know, that's, that's your choice. But the very next place that I do release it is on my mailing list. And I always will send out a, an email saying, hey, this is what, you know, is up. So then, and I've got a pretty, a pretty strong email list, actually. So there's a lot of people that will generally respond right off. Oh, I love this. So at the very least, just make sure you get on my email list so that you'll you know you'll know because by the time I actually create a video and um, you know even just the process of creating a video and editing it and getting it up well of course I would have already put a link up on um, my patrons or you know send an email out real quick to my mailing list 
to let them know. So just get on my mailing list. You just, when you hit down below, you just go to robinmcclendon.com. It takes you to my website, and right there is a um, an offer where you can take my free course. If you've already signed up and done the infinite pool and you're taking a free course, or if you've bought any printables or anything like that, you're automatically on my email list. So don't worry. But if you've never done any of that, then you do get the offer of, you know, taking the free course, the infinite pool, which is really cool. And it'll put you on the email list as well. So just so you know, if you're wondering, am I on the email list or not? If you've ever done that infinite pool or signed up for the printables, then it does put you on the email list. Oh, I'm loving this. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do these little small areas of stuff. I want this to be feathered all the way around. So I'm just all this extra stuff is great for my stamps my DIY stamps so make sure when you're using all of your um, calligraphy paper all those little extra scraps they're beautiful because they just are so translucent so you know you get a, a really nice layer for the stamps okay that little bit, I'm going to leave there because I can see some gold. So I'm going to keep that. I got this crack there. So let me go ahead and grab this spot here. <clears throat> so here, because I still have, let me see what I have left. It's big. So I have that little area of that. So this right here, I'm going to take this piece. And we're going to put this piece right in there. Get a nice chunk. Oh, love it. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and rip this edge off so it feathers a little bit when it goes over there. Okay. So yeah, I'm telling you, the stuff that was in that UPS box would just knock your socks off. I mean, if I got one book like that pad, I got 25 or 30 of them. They were just like, it was just incredible. All kind of vintage letters and stamps. I mean, old, old letters from like the 1800s, early, early 1900s. So a lot of those I'm going to actually echo stain and do a whole thing with them. So I'll share some of those in upcoming um, printables pack once I get them all done. It'll be to the point you'll just barely see what is, <clears throat> be able to read what's, what's there. But it's going to have a lot of staining. And it, was such, it was such neat handwriting and stuff. They were all handwritten letters. So, yeah, I'll do them so that, you know, none of the personal information is there. But, I mean, they're so old now, I don't think there's anything that would be a problem, but I'll still make sure. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Oh, glory. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, let's go ahead and get, let's get this here. This piece goes across. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to start it right about there and uh, take this off. This is really the perfect thing to cover up the spots between because you still preserve like the, 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 you know, the ripped edges and the way they were collaged together, you still preserve that while covering the entire page. Um, so I love that. 
we're almost done because I still have some ideas for some jelly printing. Yes, I do. Okay. So, you know, I like to start from the middle and out, especially on these long strips so it doesn't uh, get wrinkles in them. In case I haven't said that, so you'll know. <clears throat> oh my goodness, look at this. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. This is like eating uh, uh, some good food, isn't it? So it goes like this, the folds. So I have a bit here and here. <clears throat> so let's Let's put a little something in there. The color of this paper and everything is just perfect. Put that in there. Okay. All righty. This in here. Okay, and then we just have this piece here. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this. Wow, I, t I crinkled up just the perfect amount. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve out this center piece. So I have enough away from this black line that I'll be able to use this for something else. But I want this section like right here. Okay. That'll go there, down here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this. Alrighty. So now, what are we, about 40 minutes in? Okay, so we're gonna finish up with some jelly printing using a stencil again and I'm going to kind of do some um, since these are old walls I kind of have this feeling of sort of like pictographs or you know that kind of look so we'll see we'll see how it goes I think I had it this way Wait a minute. Okay. Wow. Beautiful. Okay, so we're done with that part of it. Great. Just fold that up over the back side. Perfect. Okay, so let's just take a look at it before we <clears throat> go any further. So let me just go ahead and move all this out the way so that hmm. just put all these in here on the little scraps. My little scrap bowl. 
because these are my precious scraps. I can't, I don't want to misplace those. Okay, so those go there. Alrighty, so now let's look. Let me get my bone folder so I can just, you know, make sure I'm working these edges. Okay, now this I didn't let really get down too good before I went to folding it. Okay. Could use a little bit more glue there on these edges, so we'll just Okay. Alrighty, so this is the front. So remember we wrote front on our cover. So that helps us keep our cell straight. <clears throat> so let's open it and look at it. Oh boy, I love it. I think this text and the color of this paper works in so beautifully with these um, images. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. And that's the back. And so with the concertina, we get, you know, two for one because we can flip in the opposite direction. Oh, look at that. That's just perfect. Even the the spacing on the page. And see, this is where we joined it together, but you know, we I did some um, more glue there. I did some over, you know, we collaged over it and stuff like that, so it really does start to disappear. Come on. Let's get a nice flat. Okay. So that's the nice thing about it. Yep, like that. All righty, so now on to jelly printing. So I'm gonna get a plate back over here. So this is my idea. Is I'm gonna use the stencils. And so the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna take my white. I'm just gonna use like a, this is the, do the Dollar Roni. Just a really, this is not very expensive paint. I mean, I get it from Walmart. Most, a lot of places carry this, even in Europe. I think this whole thing was like three or four dollars. I don't know, something like that. So we're gonna take our palette again. I'll go ahead and get rid of this sheet. I no need to mess with success and have that go everywhere. Okay. So, what I want to do is, let me go ahead and put a layer of, this is the Martha Stewart in the light gold. So, I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of that down. Let me just get my brayer. So, I'm doing a glazing layer. So, those guys, you guys have been following me for a while. You know, this is just a very thin layer. I call it my glazing layer. And literally, what I'm doing is just putting down a thin enough layer so that um, there is some kind of an acrylic surface down for the lettering to stick to. That's all we're doing. That's the point there. So we're going to use the white. Because I think the white in, in just little places, you see I'm going to do this, just in little spots, it's going to be good. So now I'm going to put some of this white here on my palette. And you know what else I want to mix in that's just uber gorgeous? Is, if I can put my hands on it quick enough. Um... I don't even want to say, because if I can't get my hands on it, I don't want to get all of our hopes up high. Yes, I was able to. I've got to get some more. 
No, I think I have a shipment of Arteza coming. This Arteza in the iridescent playful pink. <gasps> You'll see. I'm going to mix this in with the white. And it's just going to give an iridescent thing to it that is just to die for. So we're going to mix those together. And um, just using one of my, using this card, because that's what we're going to be using anyway. I'm just going to mix it all together. Okay. So. So yes, I am pressing through this stencil. I have really been enjoying using this stencil like this. I feel honestly that it gives more of a look of it being hand done. And a big thing that I did with these stencils is I really worked to try to get it to look like my scripting and not like a stencil with all those little stencil pieces you know like you know a stencil like all the little lines that hold it together another one of my patrons Bonnie love her she reached out to me because she's she's good in Photoshop but she's really good and I'm just kind of picking up some of the areas that smushed that you know you can just actually literally use the card and take some of it away but um, she reached out to me and said, hey, Robin, you've been talking about doing stencils. I can help you do the vector images because I was like not getting those vector images done. So I'm going to let that dry a bit. Yeah, we're going to let that dry a bit. So I wasn't getting the vectors done. And I'm like, yeah, Bonnie, I don't, yeah, I don't even really know how to do that, all that stuff. And she says, oh, I can do it. So she's been working on it for me the last few months. Oh my goodness. And she really helped to get the images to look more like my scripting than like a stencil. So when you use it like this, the way I'm showing you, it really does look like scripting on the finished piece versus a stencil. And you can see there's very few stencil breaks in here. Like there's just a few little breaks. See, like that's a break. They're almost imperceptible. You almost don't even see where the breaks are, which holds the stencil together. So that's been a big thing is what I produced something. I didn't want it to look stencil-y. I wanted you guys to have something that really reflected my language, you know, and not look too, too stencil-y. So it's a lot that goes into this. But anyway, so I'm letting this dry down a little bit because it's raised. So we got to let it, we got to let it dry down a second. So while we're doing that, um, I'm just going to kind of look at where I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be picking up sections of this. You'll see. So I know I want to put a section when I was going through it. So we'll put a section of seeing these black areas where I have, I'm going to lay some, some of the white stenciling over here. Um, definitely, I'm going to start with these two in here, but maybe I should only do one side. So I'm only going to do one side on camera because if I do both sides, then I can run the risk of, well, it's, it, but it, it should dry fast. We'll see. So let me stick to this side. So I'm definitely going to start off by putting, we're going to start off by getting some language right there. And then... I think down here would be nice. And see, I can also do these scripts in black. And if I did it in black, then I would put it in this area. So we'll see how we do here. We're coming up on 50, a little bit over 50 minutes. So, um, yeah, we have, oh, yummy. Okay. So this is drying down nicely. I definitely want it dry because if I don't, it's going to smush because I've got to put another layer. You'll see. I have to put another layer of, or I've just, I choose to put another layer of paint over it. It just makes it release better without smushing. Because if you just go, because this is raised, if you just go and print it now, it'll smush. And that'll be a look too. I mean, I do that too now because you know, I like the grunge. But if I want the letters to look distinctive, then you definitely want to let this 
dry enough that we can just get a light layer of paint over it so basically what I would do is do this put it down I normally do something else and um, and then you know when it's dry enough I come back and then I do another layer over it so I think we're probably at the point that we can do it we'll just be safe <laughs> We'll just hang out and chit chat. Just be safe here a bit. I'll have a little water. I'm a little dry. So yeah. I think I'll do this white and then I'll do the black. So you can see it. I should actually probably do this too. Because this by itself is a stunner. Okay, it may be just ready to do it, so we'll see. Okay, so I think we're, we're pretty dry. You can just touch it with your fingers and tell that it's setting there pretty good. So now I'm going to come back with some more of this Martha Stewart and the light gold. And this is just really, you know, inexpensive um, craft paint. But it really, in the, in the metallics... It really does do a really good job of pulling stuff off. So, and I like the fact that it's still pretty translucent. So, yeah, we're going to just do a light layer. Like that. So, enough that we should be able to get this to transfer. Well, this is the tricky part, but we'll see. So, I'm going to start here with this right here so I want to pull let me see it'll be upside down that way now I'm fooling around trying to get the right side up this way okay so I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down let me see where is my little okay let's fool around now Robin Mm -hmm. just want to get some of that off so I know what I'll do this is what we'll do I want to create a mask because I don't want all of that extra so per se so let's create a mask there and on both sides here and here okay there we go there we are so we'll go ahead and pick this up so we'll go ahead and put that down now I really want to just really go ahead and get some good contact here. Let's see. Is it magic? Almost. Let me just get a little bit more here. Really get that to pull. And it'll come up in bits in, in different sections. Sometimes you'll get a full pull. Like in this case, I'm going to get a partial pull, but I can do it again. So we have something. We have a little bit going on there. See that? But it's no worries because we can come back over this. Oh, I love it though. You see how you get this, um, oh my God, it just add. see that texture? I love this. Because you just get this old wall stuff going on that's just brilliant. So what we're going to do is pull this off and I'm going to... Let me just think. I'm going to use a little of this quinacridone ozo gold. It's going to introduce some orange, but since I have that there, I think I'm going to move it right up into this area. This stuff right here is the queen of all pools. 
<laughs> you know, it won't matter because it'll just over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> so I want to kind of bypass that because I like that. But I'm just going to go up a little higher like this and see what we get. It's all old walls, so we're good. Just kind of. So normally when I do it like this, because it does really stay on that plate, you can get a number of pulls with the scripting. It just depends on the plate. Like my plate has not been being used, so it's not like highly activated. The more moisture that's in it, the more it's going to... Oh my goodness, this is good though. Oh wow, you see how we got that in there? I know I'm not getting all of it right now. It's just because my plate isn't activated. But that's okay because I want to show you how we can add bits and pieces to this old wall look. And, um, and get what we need. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to pull this on a piece of... Mm. Hold up, let me get a piece of the calligraphy paper because I could also. Oh, I don't know that I want to put it on there. Hmm, it's always trying to figure it out. Um, let me see. So I like this, I just want to pull more of it because we're not getting the full. I, mean, I know we're not getting the full letters, but. It's good for me to show it to you like this because the truth of the matter is that if you were to do it and you didn't get a full pull, I want you to see how it all works together beautifully and it's not like there's really actually no failures to be honest because all of it with this kind of technique is adding texture and yumminess. Let me see. So I'm going to use this and see if I can pull more of it. I think I'll put this down because you can also pull it onto paper like I'm going to do here. Let me just, my plate is, um, I'm in Arizona and it is like so dry out here. So normally I get the best pulls when um, my plate, when I've been using my plate for a while, but we haven't been. So let me see if I can get more of this up because then you can also do it like this and uh, and use the paper too. So we can take and rip this back down and collage it on top. There's no rules, right? So it's coming up, but I want the paint. I'm getting image. That paint is still down there. So we're getting, so it's acting like a collagraph. So we're getting some of it, and then some of it is still down there, but that's gorgeous. That's a yum. Okay, so let me just keep on. We're going to keep on working that puppy. You know what? Let me get it with this, uh, this playful pink in the Arteza. You see it's iridescent. Oh gosh, this stuff is so good over black too. So I'm gonna flip it this way and grab some more on this sheet. Let's see what we can get. Because all of this we can use. Yes, we can. Mm. Gosh, this is pretty. Look how that is. Look how subtle. I'm going to put it to the angle so you can see I'm picking up. See, I'm picking up the scripting because you can see where it's raised. Oh, my goodness. And there's some gold on there now because my plate had gold on it. See, I can. Oh, look at that. I can just rip that. See, Oh, oh boy. I'm having fun. Wow. Okay, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. 
since we're doing it like this, we just put a layer of this Martha Stewart down again, just a little glaze layer. It may be better. I may have more success just working my paper. And then if my plate was more activated, I could work right on this book. But there's so many layers and so much going on that oh, I love that. And I love that quinacridone mixed into the wall background. And the texture just feels incredible. But I think what I'm going to do is do more of these pages and then just do some extra collaging in here. And if it turns out that I work the plate and I can get the image right on top of it, then I'll, you know, afterwards, <laughs> I'll just have to show you guys. But sometimes that's how it goes with a jelly plate. Okay, so black. So we're going to get the, the, in the color shift, the black flash. I love working with this because you get a nice dark color. But it does have a little metallic to it. <clears throat> and it's almost like a brown black. So it's super cool. Wait a minute. Where is... Here we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this down. Like this. I'm going to get the card. Okay. And I'm going to be a little risque because I want to show you on the book. I'm going to go right for, where is that? I'm going to go right for this. So I'm going to open this section up so it kind of expands across that whole thing. But we're going to, we're going to grab it right about here. Okay. Yeah, here we go. See? So we got that scripting on there. And it's kind of going through to the other side into that black. So it's, it's you know, it'll smush the image just a little bit, but not bad. I mean, that's still some really good scripting. It's good definition for, um, I got it upside down. Let me see, right? It's a really good definition going on there. Oh, I love it. I'm going to take it and just grab it down a little further right here. Since it's still wet, I can still get grab some of this. Yep. Cool. Got some down there and got some of the, the flash. So see, you can just do it right on top of there too. Look how luscious that is. Because now we're getting all these different layers. Let me just move this over so I can put it down. So look at the layers we're getting. We have our collage. We have the, the Japanese paper over top of it. And now we're starting to build up these layers with color. I mean, with the jelly plate. Oh, look at that. That's just divine. Ooh, okay, so I'm going to let this dry. Let me put this over here. I'm loving it. So I wanted to show you that you can work right on it. Um, Sometimes I err on the side of being cautious, <laughs> especially when you're putting in a piece of work that you're, you're nearly done with. You know, that's a little risque. But you can because the, the, the stencil is thin enough that it's delivering um, not too much ink onto the plate there so we didn't get that much smushing which was good so I'm gonna take this and just see what we can grab up we're gonna keep on just grabbing stuff to use mm, I see I love that playful pink you see you get that that a B kind of tone over top of everything else yep so there we've got some ghost printing going on Yummy. Oh, you know, I was going to show you too, because we can do this with the gold. Can't leave out the gold. Now, this is golden, um, Golden's 
Golden's Iridescent Bronze. So let's go ahead and put this down. Let's grab some of this. And when this when you're done with the stencils, you can um, take and clean them just by putting them in. Now the stencils are thin, and I'm noticing you will have some little places that, that you know could pull up. But truthfully, the thinner the thinner the stencil, you just get a much better mark than if the stencil had been thick. So you it, it may seem like oh it's more durable thick, but you don't get you don't get this really beautiful mark that looks like it's hand done so you know just put your stencils in like murphy's oil soap or something like that for them to um to clean them just let them soak and most of this paint will soak off although you know it really doesn't bother me but anyway um when i do go to clean it i'll do something like that and then also i was told i haven't tried it yet but bonnie who's helped me uh who did the vectors on these stencils she said that you just um use a heat gun and just moist, you know, wet, you know, get the stencil a little bit heated and then you just lay it like on a surface like countertop or something and you just use a bone folder and it'll, any little pieces that push up will, will, she promises will go away. I think I'm going to overprint this with the gold so I can get a lot of yummy going on here. We could just... We could just make, we could just jelly print papers <laughs> all morning. Oh, look at that. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, see the gold laying on there? Oh, look at that. And when it dries, it, see that right there? It's just going to be even better. Oh, I love that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some quinacridone ozo gold again. Now that that's down there, we have a we have a bit of a um, a uh, what am I trying to say? A ghost print still left, so we're gonna go ahead and pull that up. Yep. So yeah, you could just do these and make these papers. So we're, um, oh yes. Let's see, we're getting, let's see if I can show you. See how subtle that gold scripting is on there? Oh, you can see it there real good. Yes, indeedy. So I think that's pretty good. I definitely want to, let me see. Sometimes to get everything up, you can use like a thick, well this isn't super thick, but let's just try this white. It's amazing what will come off the plate when you just put some good old fashioned white paint down. So we're just going to just put some white over here. And I put it not too thick, but you know, you can see I got a good layer down there. And what I do is I'm going to grab some copy paper because that seems to really the thick paper does a good job of just really grabbing a lot so we can pull a lot of this extra stuff off this plate see what we get I don't want it to stay down too long because I always get all of this stuff off because this goes good for coffee staining don't forget that this page will go for coffee staining okay so let's go ahead and pull Oh, yes. Look, we, oh, we're getting some of that. I want to put it back down and see if I can get some more. All that other stuff is coming up. But you don't want to mess with it too much because then the paper will stick. Yes, look at this. It looks like a collagraph. Oh, it's gorgeous. See how that started to stick a little bit down there? Okay, looky, looky. So can you see how that's raised? Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Those sections are just gorgeous. So you know what I would do with this? I would coffee stain that. So if I coffee stain it, then what's going to happen is um, I'm going to try to put a little Arteza, I mean Aztec gold down from Arteza. See what we get? 
course I'm supposed to be stopping, right? But I'm not. Because I'm, I'm jelly printing. I never stop. If I coffee stain this, I'll show you after it's done. It is going to be beautiful. So let's put some... I think I have some more of this coming. <laughs> so I'm out of it. I'm low anyway. This is out of it for me. When I get this low, not a good thing. So let's see if we can just pull this up. I'm going to use some more of the calligraphy paper for this. I don't know. I'm just seeing what's left on the plate. So here we have it. So we've gotten some jelly printing in. We've got our collaging. So now this is extra stuff that you can use to figure out. Um, mm. So we got a little bit more going on there. Some more surface stuff. But what we'll do with that, of course, of course, I'm not stopping. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and put this back down. Let's grab a little bit more of this black flash, and that's going to make that print just super gorgeous. So yeah, so you could take these pages that you're making now, and you can use any of your stencils that you already, you know, have that you're in love with. Just until we can get this um, one out, which is going to be very, very soon. I talk with um, I Stencils tomorrow. That's who's producing them. We talk tomorrow and uh, just working on the final bit, and I'll have an idea from them when they'll be ready to purchase. Okay, so we're going to pull this up. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to go right back over this gold. Right back over it. Get a nice print. When you first do it, don't do it too hard. Because you want to just get it to lock in first before, you know, you don't want to smush it since it's still wet. So just kind of... Yep, look at that. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Perfect. See? Yum. Right over a whole thing there. And with this piece, I'm going to go ahead and grab this because this is the piece on that's on copier paper that I'm going to um, coffee stain. All righty. Yep, perfect. So that's good. Oh, I love it. That's going to look good. So there we have it. I think we're done. So you got an idea of what, you know, you can work on on your jelly plate. Um, just kind of coming up with some more things. You can do it on the thin paper. If you have onion skin, use that. If you have tracing paper, whatever you have that's thin, um, that you want to copy on so that you can use it as a collage element. This is still just gorgeous. I think I'm a coffee stain this too, because that's going to pull out. That's what I'm going to do. This is going to really pull all of that color out. So here we have it. Oh, this is yummy, too. It's like a combination of old wall and petroglyphs. Yeah? Okay, so where is my book? It's over here drying. So here we have it. That's basically... Oh, it's nice and dry. Okay, so... Yep, so here we are. So when I come back... Oh, and I love, I mean, that, so you can just get this texture like that. Even though the whole, all the characters didn't, um, didn't transfer, it's still just yummy texture. So I'm probably going to go back through in different places in here. I'm going to add some more of that texture. I'll probably use that playful pink like that. I may use a little bit of Sumi ink with that and just kind of put it throughout here to finish this off. Um, and so then next week... Um, let's see where our covers are doing over here. We're going to work with these. So these are looking good. See how this is going to work in nicely with uh, our book. Move it over so you can see it. And I'm not done with this. I plan on collaging on top of this. 
So I think I'm gonna collage on top of that too. So that's all going, this is all gonna just work. Oh, it's so beautifully. You can see I'm so happy. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. This has been a long session. This is like an hour and something now, but you guys say you love the long sessions. I'm okay with it. And I think that I've showed you a lot of techniques. So there's a lot of different places, you directions you can go over the course of the week with um, working on your own concertina. And then next week, we're going to finish up with our covers. So there you have it. Love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Remember, I put all of the different things I'm using below the video. Sometimes scroll all the way to the bottom because a lot of the links are at the very bottom. Some of the most, the ones I've just used could be in the top area. So you just kind of have to scroll through the whole document. But I try to put everything over there. Please like the video if you did. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Oh, because we're doing a 10K giveaway. That'll talk about on Saturday. But I'm, I'm like 800 from 10K. So Arteza is doing a big gift box. Um, Jelly Arts is doing a big gift box. I'm doing a gift box. So I'm going to do like this grand celebration and there's going to be a lot of chances for you guys to um to to win things so please help me but i can't give any of it away till i reach ten thousand. so i think we can get there in the next few weeks so i just um ask for your support all right love you guys take care and i will be back soon bye bye